It's a simple wooden chair with a soothing message that says relax, it's summer, and you're outside. It's this unique form that looks like, wow, I just want to sit there by the lake. It's just associated with, with great relaxation. One of the great things is the wide arms. Now you can put your uh, computer on the one wide arm and you can put your uh, gin martini on the other arm. <laughs> so. The wide arms, the sloped back, the deep seat are what give the Adirondack chair its legendary shape. It's been a mainstay for generations of campers, cottagers, and folks who just love the great outdoors. Today, its popularity stretches far beyond the Adirondack Mountains in the northern United States. It was here that it began as the Westport chair, designed in 1903 by Thomas Lee, who wanted an outdoor chair for his summer home on Lake Champlain. It was kind of a rebellion against fussy uh, Victorian furniture. He just wanted a very functional, simple, inexpensive design for outdoors. Lee shared his design with his hunting buddy, Harry Bunnell, who happened to be a carpenter. As it turns out, Bunnell was also a shrewd businessman. Bunnell actually took out a patent which documents the date for this chair in 1904. He didn't, by the way, get a permission from Tom Lee to do this. So it was this borrowed design that became an instant hit. It could withstand the elements, it was easy to make, and who knew? It was comfortable. At the old Adirondack Company in Willsboro, New York, on the banks of Lake Champlain, the chairs are still being made much like they were more than 80 years ago. It all starts with locally grown cedar, which has a natural built-in pesticide and is an excellent wood for repelling moisture. Moisture is always the, the, the enemy of all woods, uh, and it shrugs that off pretty well. It does it extremely well. So you can get a lifetime of 25 years or 35 years of untreated, unexposed uh, cedar. First, the raw lumber is placed in a large kiln, reducing the moisture and making the wood easier to work with. The kiln basically has huge circulating fans uh, and some major dehumidifiers. They heat it up a little bit, like 80 to 85 is a nice sweet spot to run it. Uh, and, and that's a good advantage of dehumidification because it doesn't crack, so you're not looking as much warpage or cracking that way. Then the wood is put through a four-sided planer. We're first of all smoothing it, and we're also taking it to a consistent size. Next, the wood heads to the chop saw area, where workers make sure only the best wood is used for the chairs. We'll take ingots of wood, which are eight feet long, and take it down to a specific set of parts. We have to use smooth, tight knots, and there's loose knots or holes or rotten areas. So your ability to see all that and cut to that is a huge impact. Parts are stored according to size in a system called a supermarket. Then it's time for the builders to go shopping. He knows what pieces are required, so he goes and draws that off his supermarket, puts it on his cart, and his next step would then be to take it to the shapers and create the actual shaped parts from the basic material there. They're shaped with a unique system that uses clamps and fixtures. The fixture has the shape of the part that we're trying to make, and you clamp the board into that fixture, and then by uh, putting the, the combination of the fixture and board on the shapers, we're going to copy it. Then it's over to the drilling area. Now all the parts are ready for the important sanding process. We spend at least a quarter of the time on a chair sanding. You can over sand and it looks less precise. You can under sand and it looks like you took planks from an orange crate. Uh, so there's a huge impact on quality and also how it feels. The chairs are assembled using a special system of jigs to make sure all the parts stay in place. It starts with the legs, called an H-piece for its distinctive shape. Then the seat and the arms are put together. Now the trademark slatted back is created. Finally, all the parts come together with perfect angles to make the chair both sturdy and relaxing. The angles have to be exactly right. That's possibly a secret. Once you get in it, you don't want to move anywhere. So you know you take the New York Times, and you sit there with a drink, and then you're there forever. The chairs from the old Adirondack Company have a unique folding feature, which adds to their longevity. It's quite important uh, because it allows people in the season to bring it in. Uh, and they could either put it in a garden shed or in their basement. Finally, the chairs are packed and ready to ship, but not before one last comfort check. But the Adirondack chair is about way more than comfort. It's one of those household fixtures that's tied to memories as well as the seasons.
I'd known the Adirondack chair from my, uh, my grandmother's home in New Hampshire. In the dusk and uh, late evening, uh, the adults would sit together. They could sit there after dinner and talk until the sun was gone. People are really a, a affectionate to it and attached to it. And, it, and it's, they feel they're not buying a piece of furniture. They're really buying a region and an experience and a memory.